this edition of Airwaves, the Secretary of Defense brings big news to NAS Patuxent River. Plus, manned and unmanned platforms work together to keep troops out of harm's way. And a Navy reservist shares lessons learned from the Fire Scout deployment to Afghanistan. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Proof. Hello, I'm Colonel Harry Hewson. Thanks for joining us. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta made an important announcement during his recent visit to NAS Patuxent River. The Stovall variant of F-35 Joint Strike Fighter is officially off probation. The Defense Secretary praised the program's hard work and commitment to the carrier and Stovall variants of the F-35. He emphasized the need for JSF technology in the future. American troops have long gone to battle secure in the knowledge that we command the skies. This fifth generation fighter is absolutely vital to maintaining our air superiority. Panetta also addressed future budgetary challenges and the current war in Afghanistan. The Naval Air Systems Command officially welcomed X-47B to Naval Air Station Patuxent River. The demonstration aircraft arrived in Patuxent River following a year-long test cycle at Edwards Air Force Base. Program lead Captain Jamie Engdahl congratulated the team's hard work and contributions to the future of unmanned aviation. For the Navy UCAS team, I'm glad to see most of you here today to celebrate. You should be justifiably proud of your accomplishments to date, and you should savor these historical moments, every one of them. We're doing that today. Enjoy. The X-47B is the first fixed-wing unmanned system designed to operate from a Navy aircraft carrier. The Patuxent River team is set to complete 19 milestone demonstrations in 2012, including a catapult launch and a shore-based arrested landing. A Navy reservist returns to Patuxent River following the Fire Scouts' first land-based deployment to Afghanistan. For Commander Brian Stevens, the teamwork back home drove the mission abroad. We were a detachment of uh, three Fire Scout aircraft. We were in northern Afghanistan, and our, our mission was to provide support to the Army units that were there, as well as our coalition partners. What Fire Scout does is it, 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 it kind of extends where, what the warfighter can see, and so, it, and so it lets the warfighter that's in country detect threats and things like that before the warfighter is actually in harm's way. My job as the officer in charge was to uh, oversee the, the maintenance and operation. Probably the biggest challenge was trying to get material back and forth. The, the fleet support team, who was our, they, they were our 911 to call and say we need help. It was their answers and their response that made a difference in us getting aircraft back up. The one thing that I'm looking forward to sharing with them is the difference that they can make in helping us meet our missions. With the team that we had out there, we showed that Fire Scout is a really capable system and there's a lot of value that it's adding to the units in, in, in Afghanistan right now. Find a mentor, be a mentor. That's the message from NAVAIR leadership. As part of National Mentorship Awareness Month, NAVAIR hosted a panel to discuss the benefits of a mentor-protege relationship. The goal is to encourage new and experienced employees to seek opportunities to learn from others. I think mentoring is one way we can pass down the culture. It allows uh, people who have been through the hard road of, of learning how to do their job and maturing in it to uh, pass that down to the people coming behind us. I learned that even though I've only been here for a short amount of time, I can also be a mentor to someone else. If someone else comes into the same developmental program that I'm in, I can help them and guide them through um, things that I may have had trouble with. So I can also serve as a mentor and be a protege to someone else. For more information on NAVAIR's mentoring program, visit the community of interest at mynavair.navair Navy .mil. The P-8 Alpha successfully participated in its first exercise with surface and subsurface fleet forces. The Poseidon conducted flyovers above the Enterprise Carrier Strike Group. The exercise demonstrates a strike group's ability to perform combat operations with limited access to land. This was the largest naval amphibious exercise in 10 years. The P-8 is scheduled to take part in a similar operational test this summer. A recent simulation at NAS Patuxent River shows the unique capabilities unmanned aviation brings to the fleet. During the exercise, the MQ-88 Fire Scout investigated a target and relayed surveillance information back to the crew of a MH-60 Sierra helicopter. 
The demonstration shows how an unmanned platform extends the line of sight for a manned aircraft, essentially keeping troops out of harm's way. Before the Sierra arrives on station, it can take that data set and then make the necessary adjustments prior to engagement. And, 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 and be, it for, be it for piracy intervention or, or for actual combat support operations, the crews that are on board the Sierra will have a data set available to them before they arrive on the scene. The information would also provide greater situational awareness to a surface battle group. The Surface Aviation Interoperability Lab acted as a shipboard vessel during the demonstration, helping to facilitate communication between the two platforms. If you would like to learn more about the demonstration, visit the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil. Vice Admiral David Archizel visited the West Coast for a tour of Point Magoo and China Lake. The Admiral served as guest speaker at the Collaborative Electronic Warfare Symposium. He spoke about electronic warfare's impact on future fleet operations. It's a tremendously important and vital aspect of our capabilities to go forward, so that's the business of it. And it's a great, makes a great business case as well. Shored up by one success after another in peace and war. Last year, Point Bagoo marked its 60th year of advancing technology in electronic warfare. The Navy and Marine Corps take steps to prepare for delivery of the latest small tactical unmanned air system. The RQ-21 Alpha provides real-time reconnaissance, surveillance, and targeting acquisition for operating forces. STUAS is using a commercial integrator system to conduct early operational capability test. The integrator allows operators to train and test the system prior to the arrival of the actual aircraft. We've got a product that we can fly now, put in the hands of the Marines and the sailors, give them an opportunity to see how it operates, see how to integrate it with their tactics, techniques, and procedures, and start to realize some of the potential benefits and, and the shortcomings so that when we do finally field it, we're that much better prepared. The first of two integrators completed its maiden flight at 29 Palms, California. The STUAS team at Patuxent River is testing the second integrator system at Webster Field. That's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.